Okay, right, Roger. Well, you know what we're doing, so I won't bore you with a windy intro and explanations. Let's get stuck into this belly pen. Time to notch it around the motor. Alright, let's show you what we've got. Um, do this first. You know, I've got a Dremel recently, Dremel 4000 for the use of this and future projects, and I needed some ammo for it. It only comes with a couple of cut off discs, and I burned through them in a little six inch cut. Learned a lot about that. Realised they were the wrong discs, they were just general purpose calf discs, not proper metal cutting discs. So I went to, I'm gonna, a lot of you mentioned the cost of Dremel ammo, it's quite expensive and I didn't even know how much it was because I never bought it. So rather, it, it figures doesn't it, it's logical that the genuine premium stuff, wheels cut off and consumables for any product will be expensive because that's how the manufacturer of the product retains its income. They sell you the accessories to go with it that make their real profit. Anyway, enough of that. The point was, we all assumed that Dremel accessories were going to be expensive, cut off wheels and whatnot. So I went out and bought some. I've got some, a very kindly viewer from uh, the Netherlands is sending me some and I really appreciate that. They're going to be they're non Dremel ones so they'll, they'll do the job and they'll get us through the bigger work we're going to do. But I just thought I'd go and buy some. So I went to the local DIY store and I bought a pack, just this once, of Dremel discs and I thought, oddly enough, do you know what, they weren't even priced on the shelf. I went up to the shelf, picked them up, everything else was priced, there was no price on these at all and I assumed because I think there was a little pack of Ford cutting discs and they were about eight quid and I thought there's 60 odd discs in there, these are going to be about 50 pounds and there are, there's uh, 36 of one, 20 of another uh, three of another, five, so we've got a 68 discs in there in all. And I thought, oh god, that's going to be loads of money, 14 pounds. That lot there, you've got um, 20, where is it? Where around? Yeah, you've got 20 medium discs in that one, uh, 36 fine discs in there, you can see them all, and five super heavy duty fat discs, four of these thinner ones and three of them. So you've got 68 discs, 14 pounds. I was amazed, when I went over there, I said, how much, can you just confirm the price on that? Because I'll go and put it back, because it'll be too much money. 14 pounds, I'll have one of them then. So that's pretty cool, I've got them to be going on with. I'm gonna use them today to slice and notch out where I need to around the engine, which brings me to the next point. I'll show you what I'm gonna do with the actual belly pan itself. Now you know that what I've done here, this is what we're up to, ZX7R fuel tank, with the base cut out, turn it to a belly pan. Simple enough idea, ain't hard is it? Now, where I'm at the moment is I've just cleaned it off, cut the base out, cleaned up the cut, and I'm ready to go. And I've just chopped off the main part so I can get it under the engine in the first place. Now, two or three of you said, um, that there's been a, I was gonna not, I was gonna band it, right, let's start the beginning chart, sorry. <laughs> Right, what I was going to do was cut it down the middle and weld a band of steel right down the centre. So band it so it's wider and it fits right around the engine. A couple of you said that might look like a bathtub and this is why I love YouTube the most. It's why I absolutely love it. You come out with something as an opinion, makes me think, yeah you're right actually, because looking at this, this bottom edge here, that fits around the motor okay. That's no problem with that, it's wide enough. It's this front section here that's a bit too narrow. So rather than trying to, it's actually the back of it doesn't need banding. That can stay as it is. So okay, we could band the front, but then the thing's gonna look square, like a big tray. And also, and the worst point of all, if I band it at the front to make the front wider, this, this lovely curve, that beautiful organic curve, which you couldn't make, you could not create that, no matter how much you tried, you couldn't make that. So why ruin it? Why cut down that, put a flat piece of steel in, it'll come round, go across, then come round, you'll have this flat front, it'll just look horrible, so that ain't gonna happen. So I'm not gonna bend it. What I'm gonna do instead is notch it around the engine. So where there's an obstacle, I'm just gonna cut this out a bit until I can lift it up and up, then lift it up a bit more, find the next obstacle, cut that out and up a bit more, and so on. So it's a repetitive process today. Put it under the motor, that's why I've jacked the bike up. Put it under the motor, listen it, mark it, feel for where the obstacles are, and then cut that little bit out. Uh, and it's all about the Dremel today, so we're gonna have some fun and games with this. See how long these last, I might burn through them today. Uh, I'm gonna put those on the, on the spendy list as well, so we know roughly how much we're spending on this project. And at the end of this, what is it now? 
Uh, came in here at half past nine, getting set up. It's now 20 to 10. I've got to 12 o'clock because I've got to get this up by 5 p.m. today because we are making another video tomorrow, so we've got lots to do. So right, without further ado, enough of all. You know what we're doing. Let's get stuck into it.
minutes, it's nine o'clock, three and a bit hours, and as you can see, the Dremel's pretty fragile, those little discs, they slice beautifully, they're so controllable, but the life expectancy of a mayfly, they truly are. You know, some of them, you just touch the job and they explode, but hey-ho, um, that's just consumables. I wanna show you what this looks like. I'm gonna just clear up some of this dust, and once that's done, I'll give you a good look around it, because we're not done yet, not by a long way, but we're a lot closer than we were. Let's clear up first. Right, <laughs> camera's covered in it. Right, let's give you a look around. Let's take you off there. Right. Okay, some total of three and a half hours. As you can see, it's just repetitive. Uh, that's good, happy with that. Uh, right, as far as the curvature is concerned, I've got that pipe now touching about here. Just gently touching. So I'm gonna cut a little oval in that at some point. Um, just so that the pipe will just peep through, that will look really cool and it will allow cool air in. I may also, when I cut that oval, uh, flare this back edge so you get this effect to drag some cool air in and cool the pipes down because obviously uh, all, all exhaust systems themselves get extremely hot and to cut down the level of heat inside here, uh, that little vent, like a little louver, uh, that might work, but anyway, that's later. So that works. Bringing this up here, I cut that. Initially, I wondered whether it was a bit too low, but it seems to have worked out all right because the more you, every time you cut a profile, if something needs a little, like this, where are we? Like that there, for instance, that's gonna to touch that pipe, and obviously this won't be a sharp edge later. That will be just dressed out with a stone. I've got the spinning stones, which will just dress that out nicely, but that just wants a little bit more cut yet. I just wanna come out around that, so it's got this kind of gap here, so a five mil gap all the way around, so it looks nice. Nothing looks good when it's touching and trapped like that, it looks crap. This looks a bit too close as well, so that will just want a little dress with a stone. Just visually, when you see a thing, like that thing, and then you see this panel, it's nice if the panel comes round and then just steers around the thing and then goes back again, so it just gives it that. That top, don't know, not sure about that yet. Not so sure. Uh, underneath here, if I can get you down there, still got the convenience of this hole. Uh, groping around, where are we? Groping around up in there, there's your pipes, and there's just the exhaust. Now, putting my hand in there, there's about an inch now between the tinware and the exhaust, which is the minimum. I don't want it to come down any more than an inch, and I'm gonna put some heat uh, insulating wadding inside here, like the canvas thick stuff, which will just be possibly riveted in, I don't know, something. But that'll be bonded inside there so that it doesn't transfer too much heat to this metal, otherwise it'll peel all its paint off. So. That's the, as high, in terms of lift, that way, it's as high as it needs to go. Now, that's it. It's, let's stand back with you for a bit. There you go. Kind of, you can get the old profile of it. So it's looking good. On the back, um, eagle-eyed might have noticed that when I cut the slot out, where are you, there you are. When I cut this slot out for the shock, I cut it offset. There's a little uh, pressed indentation in this old tank, which was obviously in the center. And that's because this shock is offset. The, I measured it as per the shock, not just centered. And I had to then recut the whole thing out for the exhaust. So it's got room to move at that little corner there. Again, it looks a bit weird being in, so that would just get dressed out. Just this edge just here, that would just get nipped off. Uh, but like I said, I'll show you in there, if you look, yeah, I can see, see the shock. As you can see, it's, it's offset. It's about an inch to the left, which is why the swing arm from the VFR donor bike won't fit because it's a centralized shock. So I'll have to end up uh, alley welding new brackets like that onto this frame. Not going there, too much work, not bothered. Uh, I know it's nothing's too much work, but ultimately uh, I quite like that. It's a six inch wide wheel with a 200 tire. That would look nice. Anyway right back to the bash plate. This section for the stand, just that's just a, a, a blind cut. I just kind of eyeballed it, cut it. It's not quite right, as you can see. Coming down there, it touches there. So then work where it touches, kind of eyeball the sweep, and then come in that way. So I think that needs to come possibly from this corner, a little bit lower, and it might need a bit more here, because obviously it sits forward. Once it's down, 
it doesn't come down vertically, it goes a bit further, so perhaps a bit more. Uh, but then that, that's got it started. Um, perhaps wish maybe I, I could have left that a bit, I don't know, whatever. No regrets. <laughs> that is, right, about this way. Jammed in there, right, here we go. Um, now this I'm really proud of, that looks awesome. I love that, it's not quite right, it's got to have some little more work, but I wanted that. Um, this was what, that was what promote, uh, or prompted the concept of maybe uh, banding this and widening it, but absolutely not. It is more than wide enough, as you can see by this area here being, you know, get your hand in there, that's wide enough. So that's good, I like that notch around there. It, it, there's loads of options to do loads of fun stuff with that, possibly even to box that in to create a little sheet metal cover that will then weld over this like that. I don't know, something, not sure. Not important at this stage. Again, a little bit more work there. That's got to come out wider and don't know that again is all wrong that ain't gonna work so I'll just dress that corner off as you can see that is possibly about halfway and as for this front edge that again is as high as it needs to go the pipes down here are about an inch above and that one touches uh, this one this side doesn't because they kind of go off in that direction because the pipe exits that side so once that pipe's got its little oval hole, that will move this a bit. It might go up a tiny bit higher. This edge, possibly, had I left it a bit higher, but I cut it on that brazed edge of that bracket. So it was an ugly bracket thing here. So that was never gonna work. What I might do is just weld a little panel in that comes up to that at an angle, and then dress that in at the same time. So it comes up here, and then just that, that arc there that you see that curves, carries on back in, and up to the radiator there, because obviously you can't cover any of that. So that might work later on. And again, there's loads and loads and loads more work to do. Well, as far as the old Dremel stuff's gone, as you can see on the video as we were going through, that was probably the most footage clips I've ever done on this camera. It's probably about 60 clips on this. I've gone through, well that was 36 discs in there, and there's four left. So 32 of those discs used, about six of those, more, two of them, one of them, and I started on that one. They're so thick, they're just grinding discs, to be honest. So you don't want to use those. These are lovely, they last ages, but they are a little bit clumsy, they judder slightly. I don't know if it's because of these fibers in it or what. But the ones that do the best cutting, when you look at cutting round here, where are you? There we are, when you look at cutting round here, and getting these little angles right, and that one the other side, that real sharp angle, cutting in these angles without having to faff about, those little tiny super thin discs, those. I'll show you one again. Those. I don't know what thickness they are. I doubt that's even a mil, but they're lovely. But as you can see on a few of those occasions, you whiz it round, it touches the job and just explodes. Uh, which is why PPE is essential for using a Dremel. Uh, good, good pair of goggles or maybe even a big old face mask. So I'm gonna be very chuffed with that. I've used probably I've still got, I only used about four or five of them, so I've still got all those to use, and they're perfectly competent, can use them. I reckon that will help me finish the job. 14 quid, I'm gonna put that on the list there in a minute. Very, very chuffed with that. Very chuffed with the quality. Oh shit, just chuffed with the rubbish in it. <laughs> sort that out in a minute. Let's put you back up there. All right, get up the last. Right, okay, um, I hope you enjoyed that. That was a long-winded, uh, long time just cutting little tiny lines. As you can see, I'm learning as we go here. That Dremel product is clearly something that needs understanding. It's not just like your regular cutting disc with your angle grinder. I mean, they're clumsy. A four-inch disc and a grinder would have made a mess out of that. Um, I reckon there would have been as much faffing around if I just cut the big chunks out with the grinder and then end up cutting too far and having to weld up little slots back up. You know, you can make such a mess with that. This is so detailed, it's so accurate, it's just time consuming. That's taken a long time. I probably spent an hour out of the last three and a half hours changing the discs, you know, but it's not a problem. It's just patience, like all these things, and it's coming on nicely. As I said, an awful long way to go yet. That's got to have loads more dressing and finalizing until it's absolutely right. You can't uncut a cut, you can't undrill a hole. So I'm going to just keep going a little bit, a little bit. You can see on that what I was doing. You cut a nice slot, it's lovely. You, you angle it correct, but it needs another little bit out. So you then have to do it again and then again. So I probably did five or six times I'm cutting the same 
slot to notch it in perfectly. But if you cut too much, then you've got a gap and you can't do much about that. Yeah, you can weld a piece in, but it don't right, does it? It ain't good. It's better to cut it right first time. And the only way to cut it right first time is a little goes at it. You could possibly get, I've seen for the Dremel tools, I've seen like a little, um, what looks like a router bit where you can kind of, I don't know, I'm gonna look into it. There's loads of here, thousands of tools for Dremels, loads of stuff, so I'm gonna look into more of them, but standard, ordinary erosion, cutting off wheels are great. And the thinner, the better. They're just the most fragile and you have to be so careful. But you, cause you can saw, you could cut around a lovely, literally you can, you could draw around a pencil a little time and you could just whiz around it like that. It's fantastic. It really is controllable and I'm really, very happy with it. And I know I'm gonna make a good job of this, which means a lot to me. I want this right because of the amount of you that are engaged with this and are supporting us and virtually cheering us along, we can't let you down. I wanna make a great result on this. And so far, I'm very happy with where we are, but I've got to call it a day now. That's it, I've got to get this up before 5 p.m. It's Saturday, I'm, and this is a one day video. Normally I have either Thursdays or Fridays off my day job, so then I do the video which goes up Saturday morning. It is Saturday at the time of talking to you now, and this hopefully will go up, hopefully by 5 p.m. because this evening we're going out in Penny Pit Stop with some friends, and there is something else, something that you'll be quite interested in. Those of you who follow the channel for a long time, you know we do the Q&A videos where we get Mr. Dyson over and we have a fantastic time with cake and tea and your questions. And we just have a, a three quarters of an hour video doing Q and A. Well, it's time for another one, but this is a rather special one. Uh, we've put some, we only needed about 10 to 20 questions. So we put the questions out to our patrons. They all know that, who they are and we've got all their questions in. So there's no need to send us questions on this one. This is gonna be more entertainment than Q and A, but I think hopefully we'll do a little bit of that. Like we do usually, the nice mix of it. But this is gonna be with some very special guests. We've got some friends, Mike and Melly Wrench. If you watch the channel, you'll see that we have some of our music and some of the music today was from Wrench Guitar Works. Now, Mike Wrench, who is the guitarist and luthier that produces that music, he's coming over with his lovely wife, Melly, to the UK for a vacation and they're gonna stop by the garage and see us. So we thought we would get Mr. Dyson over and some cake and we do a Q and A with them. So that's gonna be filmed tomorrow, Sunday, and that will be up next Sunday because it will take some time to edit because there'll be lots of gibbering and lots of laughing and silliness and we hope you enjoy that. So at time of recording this, I've got to get this one up. Filming a QA and a for you tomorrow, you'll see that next Saturday and there'll be more of this in the week on Wednesday if I get a chance, okay? And that's enough waffle. I'll leave you with the very latest uh, plate we've got from the Wall of Friends, one from Hawaii, Can you believe that. So just a quick one on the Wall of Friends, if you don't know what it is, we collect number plates from around the world, not UK, because they all look the same. So sorry about that, guys. But ultimately, we want to see where our international viewers live. And this is the great way to do it. So if you've got a plate and you're allowed to send it out of your country to another place, then we collect them and we put them on the wall. So give us a shout. We'll give you a land address. You can send it over and we'll put it on the wall. You can see your plate. It's a great way of engaging with you. So there we are. That's it. I'm going to shut up, Waffling. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for all your amazing support. I will leave you with the Wall of Friends. Take a seat or ride safe. See you next time.